Welcome to West Coast Stackers. Whether you're a seasoned stacker, a dedicated prepper, a passionate numatist, or someone just interested in silver and gold, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about my recent purchase of 21 ounce silver bars. I have some very cool 30 and 40 year old silver bars I want to share with you today. Hang tight and we'll be right back. The first one we're going to take a look at are some of these National Canadian Mint 1 ounce silver bars. And I'll bring it up to the light. Uh, on the very top, National Refiners of Sayers 1 Troy Silver, uh, 1 ounce Troy Silver, 999 fine. We have the Maple Leaf to the bottom left. And as you see, there's a serial number, 000. Five or six three zero on the right sides, uh, the national insignia, the letter N. On the back side, these are blank. These are produced by the National Canadian Mint, also known as the Royal Canadian Mint. Uh, government government mint owned and located in Ottawa, Canada. It's probably one of the most respected and renowned mints in the world. Um, primary responsibilities for circulated coins for Canada, but it's well known for producing uh, the precious metal bullion products and numismatic coins that we're so fond of, uh, the maple leaves. So we're going to take a look at Atmex that has these on sale and get a little more background for these. I found on Atmex those National Canadian Refiners of Sayers one ounce silver bars. Um, as you see, uh, they're very similar, in fact, identical to mine. On the bottom, uh, there's the stamped maple leaf. There is, in the middle, a six-digit serial number. What is very interesting is I have extremely no, no, low numbers, uh, five nine fives, five eight fives. Um, it, it, the serial number on mine are 000695, um, 000950, um, 000544. So they're, they're very low numbers. I was unable to find any information on it. On the bottom right hand is the letter N for national, the insignia. Uh, these are very cool. I looked at some of the product details. <clears throat> One ounce National Refiners of Sayers Civil Bars are an ideal way to add to your silver holdings. These are difficult to obtain, making them highly sought after by collectors. You know, originally when I read this, I was skeptical. Um, I've got mine just last week on the initial dip on silver spot prices. And I bought them, I bought 20, round, uh, 20 silver bars at $27.05 each. Initially, when I when I got them, I was disappointed because there was so much tarnish and they were so beat up. And in, in my head, I said, okay, I know silver is silver. Uh, but the more I got to look at them, the more I realized, hey, uh, these appear to be very old. In the collection that I got, I have some bars from 1988, uh, 1981. And I'm going to make the assumption that these are 20 or 30 years old. So I attempted to look up that number on it. I have uh, a 000695 number. I was unable to find any kind of background on these. So if anybody knows about that, uh, put a comment in the link to see if how, how we could track these down. Uh, one of the things that I always understood about provenance, so if you have a piece of art and you know the provenance, say an artist painted it, um, it was given to uh, a cousin or a daughter-in-law, and it was unknown for a long time, and then rediscovered the provenance is the history or the link back to the artist. Uh, with coins, uh, provenance is that historical aspect to the coin. So I never really thought a great deal about it. You'll see a penny or a nickel that's very old. There's something unique about it, a misstamp, a misprint. And it will bump up the value to 5 or $10. But 
But in my head, I mistakenly assumed provenance meant a high value also, not just the historical background. So uh, maybe there is uh, a market for these. Maybe they're sought after. I mean, there's niches and niches in uh, the silver world. So perhaps they are. Uh, we'll look into that as as we go on. I have one from Sunshine Mint, a one ounce silver bar. Let's see if we can get a good photo of this. Um, if you can see just below Sunshine on the very top is a stamping of 1988. We have the Eagle uh, 0.999 fine silver, one troy ounce Sunshine Minting, minting or excuse me, mining. Uh, the back is blank. We have Sunshine Bullion stamped at the very bottom. Um, the company Sunshine Minting was founded in 1979 in Idaho. Um, uh, they produce all sorts of different uh, rounds, um, medallions, bars, uh, different uh, unique items such as bullets and poker chips. Uh, one of the interesting things about Sunshine Mint is the produce blanks for the U.S. Mint and the Royal Mint and Perth Mint in Australia. So I found these online, eBay, 1988 Sunshine Bullion Silver Bar. Buy it now, one bar, $38.92. I think it's kind of high. Um, as we see in our photo here, the stamping is 1988. We have a uh, so we have an eagle, uh, looks like the sun behind him, uh, stars along the side, 0.999 fine silver, one troy ounce. Um, there is not much of a story on these. When I looked at it, uh, the year, of course, 1988, uh, Sunshine Mint, Vintage Silver Bar, Secondary Market. Will show signs circulation, tone, or spotting, and they are 34 years old, which I believe is probably the coolest thing. Uh, and the the second coolest is that coin stamping in the uh, bar itself. The next one we're going to look at are these one ounce silver bars from the uh, minted from the U.S. Strategic. Stock file, let's see if we get a good shot of this. Uh, silver formerly stored at the U.S. Assay Office in San Francisco. If we can we'll see the date, 1981. I've got a better shot for you. I've got this on a website from Investor Crate. We'll take a look at it a second. So the backside, 999 fine silver. We have the American Eagle and the flag, one troy ounce. I have two of these. One of these is actually a better condition. Um, I don't know how to view these or the condition. Uh, as I said, I really enjoy when you see the silver uncirculated, beautiful and shiny, reflective. Um, this one definitely looks better. Um, all these rounds, definitely older. Uh, 1981 on this one, that would make it uh, 42 years old. So let's take a look at that article from Investor Crate now. So I found this online. Investor Crate had a little bit of background on these uh, U.S. assay office rounds and bars. Uh, so it, there actually appears to be a little bit of a story behind it. Investor Crate, uh, I'm not affiliated with them. Uh, one of the things they offer is you could uh, put uh, money uh, down with them each month and they will send you a product or they call the crate of assorted types of rounds and bars. Um, but the story behind it is the Hunt Brothers and the Silver Saga. Um, let me read some of this. Some of you have asked about the assayers, bars, and rounds that went out in some Investor Crate's very own generic silver and big bar crates. And they say these are vintage bars and rounds and have quite the story behind them. So even if you decide to sell out, meaning your other silver, hang on to these. To explain the story behind them, they say, let's get familiar with Silver Thursday and the Silver Saga that put silver on the map. So in uh, 1979, part of the story, um, they're going to talk about the Hunt Brothers. Uh, the 
Hunt Brothers in 73 um, decided to try to corner the silver market. Uh, so um, they started making very large purchases of silver. There are stories of them purchasing 55 million ounces at one time, 43 million ounces at another time. Um, these guys were serious stackers, serious ballers. Um, they sought all sorts of different types of investment. The two brothers, the Hunt brothers, were the sons of uh, the founder of Hunt Oil in Texas. Um, this uh, gentleman was extremely wealthy. Um, the two brothers became businessmen in the 50s and 60s. And in 1973, this was uh, a couple years down the road from when uh, Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard. But like a lot of other stackers, they believed that the fiat dollar and the value of their money was losing uh, its the money. Their money was losing its value, and so they decided to invest in a serious asset. Um, part of the story here: they chose silver because gold was still illegal for private ownership following the 1933 ban on private ownership of gold by the U.S. government. Um, and that's right. And as they say, if the government doesn't want you to have it, stuck stock up on it. Uh, so the the story they decided to buy silver. They bought an estimated one third of the entire available world supply. Um, and they, as they noted, they were the sons of Haroldson Lafayette Hunt, an East Texas oil ty tycoon worth an estimated five billion dollars. So part of the story on these rounds. Um, they include three brothers, Nelson, uh, Lamar, and William Hunt. Um, the story, like I said, began in 73 when they began stockpiling it. It wasn't until 79 and 80 that investors and speculators got wind of what the brothers were trying to do, and the market just went crazy. Um, it went from, I believe it was $6 an ounce or seven dollars an ounce to a high uh period in 1980 just a brief period in intermarket trading of almost 50 dollars an ounce uh, when they got wind of what the hunt brothers are trying to do um so part of our story is uh, a little further on here another date on our bullion minted from the u.s strategic stockpile silver formerly stored at the u.s assay office in san francisco cc that's right, 1981, as we've seen on the rounds that I showed you the picture. Um, part of the story, uh, so silver in 7980 just took off. Um, it just exploded in price. And although the market it said dropped over 50% at its peak, it still had a ways to go before it leveled out. The U.S. government under the Carter administration, with a silver fiasco in mind and the end of the silver in circulatory coinage, meant to diminish the need for the United States Assay Commission. Therefore, it abolished it in 1980, and all of its silver stockpile was auctioned off. This conveniently served the purpose of driving silver prices back down to their appropriate inflation-following prices. And uh, here's the background on our uh, two silver bars. A company by the name of Continental Coin and Jewelry Company, based in Van Nuys, California, Mint Mark CC bought a large amount of the silver and produced the bullion in question. Commonly mistaken, and I did this myself, the U.S. Mint, or otherwise officially authorized by the U.S. Treasury or government bullion, this private company produced both silver rounds and silver bars from the silver they purchased. All the silver is 99.999% uh, in purity, and the back reads silver trade unit weight in ounces and or grams, as well as a metal type of purity. Uh, so here's an example of the rounds that this private mint produced. Um, further down, we find the ones that I have. I have two of these. And it has a little bit of story behind them. The, this specimen was produced in one troy ounce, 331.1 grams bar form. The one ounce silver bar also came in two variant types. One, shown here. And type 2, not shown. I have the type 1. The difference being the lettering with the type 1 variants having skinny lettering and type 2 having fat lettering. The annotation of 1 is always spelled out as 1. So these are just like the ones I have. I have two of these. 
Um, initially, when I was looking at the Canadian rounds, um, excuse me, the Canadian bars on the eBay site, and they said they were collectible. I was very hesitant. Like I said, I'm learning this as we go, as we learn. And so um, I usually thought provenance, which is like with, if you have an art piece or a coin, that you know the history behind it, um, who had it, the possession, how it went from perhaps the artist to um, the person who's actually holding that piece of art or coin now. And so... In my mind, I always connected provenance, I don't know, maybe it's the sound of the word, with great value. So although um, these may be historically significant, um, they may not appear really, uh, a great price associated with them. Um, you've seen pennies and nickels uh, going for 5 or $10 or $11, and uh, that is a lot for a nickel or a dime um, because of its history, a, a misprint, uh, a misminting, uh, an additional mark or something on the coin. The uh, last couple bars we have, uh, we have, which is very recognizable, one of the Asahi one-ounce bars. Um, fine silver, silver 0.999, one troy ounce uh, the back has a very cool texture. Uh, we, I've seen a lot of these around. These are very familiar. Um, I don't think we have a type of provenance we've discussed with some of these earlier bars. But um, the background on Asahi is they're actually a um, Japanese company uh, headquartered in Tokyo, Japan. Um, they own refineries in Utah, Canada, and Miami and produce a lot of different products. The last one I have here for you guys is the mystery bar. I didn't find this online on the very bottom. I'm going to post a close picture of this on the screen here in a second. Um, the eagle uh, looks like it has an olive branch and a shield on the very bottom. It says, uh, it's hard to make out, is capital G and A mint. But I really did not find anything online. Obviously, you can see very deep tarnish on the back. One troy ounce, 0 0.999 fine silver. Um, very cool. I have four of these. And here is the question. Do you guys in the audience know what is the origin of this round? These also look very old. I'm guessing in the 30-year range. Um, if you know, uh, drop a comment down in the link below. Thank you for spending a portion of your day with us here at West Coast Stackers. It was very cool running down the background on some of these old silver bars. Remember, continue stacking, stay vigilant, and remember that freedom to invest is a fundamental right that we must protect. Thank you for being a part of West Coast Stackers, and let's keep stacking. Thank <laughs> you.